Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here the video showing you some tips on how not to get hacked. Now in the last couple days, there have been some major websites that have been hacked, including Last.fm, eHarmony, and LinkedIn. Now while there's nothing you can do about a specific website getting hacked, if it happens, it happens, but there are definitely some things you can do to make sure that your data is safeguarded and secure. The first tip is very simple. Don't use the same password on multiple sites. Now I know we've all done this before, however it's a very bad idea as far as security goes. So let's say you had an account at Last.fm for example. Okay, so you use it and you have the same password on that as you have on multiple other sites. Well, all it takes is something like this to happen where Last.fm gets hacked and all of a sudden your password is available, most likely with your email address or all kinds of other information, it's available for anyone. So all they need to do is say, oh, okay, you have a Gmail account with this password. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. They go to Gmail, they punch in the password from Last.fm, and bam, they have access to your email. And once they have access to your email, then of course, they can reset passwords, they can get at pretty much anything that they want. To avoid this, it's really easy. Just don't use the same password on multiple sites. Now, to do this, it's really simple. If you've got some crazy awesome brain, just get a bunch of different passwords for different sites and just remember them. Uh, if you're like me, though, you probably can't do that. So in that case, I recommend using LastPass. One reason you should use LastPass is that it will allow you to create a long random password. So for example, a lot of us might use a password similar to this. Now at first glance, it looks like a nice secure password, however it really isn't. For starters, it's all lowercase. Now when you want to create a good secure password, it should always contain a mixture of lowercase and uppercase letters, as well as punctuation. On top of that, it's a dictionary word. Now any time someone's trying to hack you, it's very simple to go ahead and crack it if it's a standard word straight out of the dictionary. So instead, you should use something like this, which LastPass will create. Now of course, there's no chance that you're going to be able to memorize this by yourself, but since LastPass has it saved, you really don't have to worry. LastPass is also integrated into most major browsers. So all you need to do is download the extension, and it will automatically fill in all the information that you need as far as your passwords go. You can also opt for LastPass Premium, which is $12 a year and will allow you to access LastPass on pretty much any kind of mobile device out there. Another tip is to change your passwords regularly. Now if it's a site that you rarely use or doesn't have any kind of major personal information, it's probably not something that you need to worry about. However, if it's something important like banking or email, it's a good idea to change your password once to twice a year. Another tip is to use antivirus software. Now if you're running a Mac or a Linux computer, you really don't have to worry about this. However, if you are running Windows XP, Windows Vista, or Windows 7, then antivirus is a good idea. Now, I should note that antivirus is actually not necessary. So a lot of people do not use antivirus and never have any issues. In fact, I've had antivirus on my computer for several years now without having any issues. However, it is a good backup. What I recommend is to download Microsoft Security Essentials. Now this is what I run and I think it's absolutely excellent. Not only does it not really take up a lot of resources, so it doesn't bog your computer down like a lot of other antivirus softwares, but on top of that, it stays updated and does pretty much everything it needs to in the background. Of course, there are some paid ones as well, however, I generally don't recommend these just because while they might be slightly better sometimes than Security Essentials, of course they cost and they're almost always going to take up a lot more resources and slow your computer down. Another very easy thing you can do to keep yourself a little bit more secure is to keep everything up to date. Now there's a lot of different things that are involved in getting yourself on the internet. So at the base level you have your operating system. So this could be Windows 7, it could be Mac OS X line, it doesn't really matter. But there are always new updates that help with security and bugs and all that kind of stuff. It's very simple to keep your computer up to date and I highly recommend that if you haven't updated in a while, just double check and see if there are any new updates available and install them to make sure that you're as secure as possible. You should also keep your browser up to date. So if you use a newer browser such as Google Chrome, you really don't have to worry about this as it will automatically keep you up to date. However, if you have an older browser such as Internet Explorer, it's a great idea to use the update functionality from time to time to make sure that it is in fact fully up to date. You should also keep your plugins up to date. So these range from everything from Flash, which is most likely what you're using to watch this YouTube video right now, to QuickTime, to Silverlight, to Java. Now generally these are going to be spread all over your computer with different options and control panels. However, the best way to check to see if they're all up to date is to use the Mozilla plugin checker. This website is made by Mozilla, the makers of Firefox. However, it does work in any browser. What it will do is scan your computer for all the different plugins you have installed and see if any of them do need to be updated. If so, a simple link will appear, we can download the latest update and get that all taken care of. Lastly, but definitely not least, it comes down to common sense. 
So of course, you really need to be careful about downloading shady programs. Uh, there's all kinds of spyware and adware that is not a virus technically, but it's something that you may accidentally install while you're installing something. So typically free software will have toolbars or might even have stuff that will put ads on your computer, all that kind of stuff. And this is not anything that antivirus will take care of as you're the one saying, okay, okay, okay on the million checkboxes. So anytime you install something, it looks a little shady. Just be sure to read carefully if there's going to be any kind of toolbars or anything like that. You should also be careful with torrents and illegal downloads. Now, if you want to torrent something, by all means, go ahead. It's none of my business, but you should be at least a little bit wary of these. So run it through a virus scan or something before opening it up, as you never know what could be lurking inside. So there you guys have it. A few tips on how to keep yourself more safe and secure online. And while there's no foolproof way of doing this, by taking a few simple precautions, such as not using the same password on websites, installing some antivirus, and being wary of what you download, it can make a big difference. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.